As talk of takeovers and player sales swirled around yesterday, one man was seeking divine inspiration for Aston Villa's current troubles. Rev. Philip Knott from Aston Parish Church used his Twitter account to put the club's current crisis into perspective. He stated, Please remember at AFC official fans that our club is made up mostly of ordinary working people who are awaiting news about developments which will affect jobs and mortgages not just where we might finish in the league. For all our hard-working staff tonight, fans responded to the tweet, at British Bulldog, Amen to that Rev J Not for all those whose livelihoods hinge on this news let's hope and pray it's good news for them and us all UTV, at MR underscore dupes, thanks, a sober reminder that's perhaps often easy to overlook. These people won't all have a mortgage either, there'll be rent to pay and food to put on the table. What we know Aston Villa's cash crisis could soon be resolved after Birmingham Live revealed a Middle Eastern group have lodged a bid for control of the club. Owner Tony Shaw has been discussing possible solutions with a number of interested parties and now has a preferred group on board. Birmingham Live understands that a group have come forward and are currently in talks with the embattled owner. Offers of varying levels of control have been discussed and a deal could soon be struck. It's understood that a two-stage deal has been proposed consisting of majority control for the new party with the option of a potential takeover. Other groups are still interested but this offer is now at an advanced stage. These next few days are crucial for Villa as Shaw desperately needs a cash injection to help cover the forthcoming bills. On Wednesday we reported how money needs to be raised by Friday to pay this month's tax bill on time. How we got here Middle East Group Lodge bid live coverage latest Villa news selling either Jack Grealish or James Chester would paper over the cracks in the short term as Villa continue to lose around £5 million a month. But with both Tottenham and Stoke City yet to meet Villa's valuations of either player, Shaw has been forced into finding another solution. On Saturday the owner flew in to London for crunch meetings with his assistant, Rong Tin Hee, known as Ho. He discussed the need to find cash quickly as the forthcoming bills remain a concern. It's now understood that a deal is close to being agreed. Exclusive Middle East Group Lodge bid with Tony Shaw for control of Aston Villa Our response football editor and Villa writer Greg Evans discussed the situation Villa vote could the day's hours be ticking on Tony XIA's involvement at Villa Park. The man who took over from Randy Lerner could end up as a minority shareholder, or not involved at all. Yes, he still has a part to play what next? Here's what to expect over the coming weeks, with the help of football finance expert Rob Wilson. What is due diligence? When a prospective buyer undertakes an appraisal or investigation into a business to establish its assets and liabilities. The consortium interested in Villa will evaluate the commercial potential and see if everything is running as expected. These are the steps taken before signing a contract. What is an exclusivity agreement? A preliminary agreement which parties can enter into at the beginning of negotiations. The intention is to give buyers a clear field for a specific period to make their arrangements without the fear that other buyers may beat them to the purchase. In this particular case, it's likely that the length of the agreement will last between four and six weeks. What is a non-disclosure agreement? This is a legal contract between two or more parties that signifies a confidential relationship exists between the parties involved. The consortium would have signed one of these to help protect their identity. The story of the Aston Villa man and Maradona's Hand of God 1986 World Cup shirt So how long does it take over normally take once it has reached this stage? Sadly it's a case of how long is a piece of string, says Rob Wilson. The whole process can be really quick or it can also take a long time. When going through the due diligence stage it will become clear whether the interested party has the funds to purchase the club. What you tend to find is, if there is a concern that this isn't the right group to take them over, the current owner might put an early finish date on that exclusivity period. 
it's very rare that you would ever see a very long date put on that exclusivity period. They wouldn't look at it for say, six months because if it was taking that long it would quickly become clear that nothing would come of it. It can become a bit confusing, though, because an early exclusivity period could also mean that the buyers want to get the deal done really quickly. What is the next stage after due diligence is completed? They would normally enter an agreement in principle to buy the football club. You would then look at the proof of funds. The prospective owners would then pass all their information on to the Aston Villa Consortium, then Dr. Shaw would actually go through it all to make sure it's all above board. The legal people would get involved too. Then they'd sign up provisional contracts. It would move fairly quickly once the due diligence had been done and there was a firm offer to buy the football club. What started and where it ended at 7 p.m. on Saturday, May 26, the look on Aston Villa owner Tony XIA's face said it all. When that final whistle was blown in the club's make-or-break playoff clash with Fulham, all dreams of promotion to the Premier League evaporated, and with them the prospect of a £160 million upturn in the club's finances. Within weeks the reason for XIA's despondency became clear. An unpaid tax bill and a threatened winding up order showed the scale of the club's financial woes, while turmoil in the boardroom saw the exit of chief executive Keith Wynes, followed by an exodus of other key staff. Now, Shaw is looking for a new cash injection into the club. The sale of star players seems inevitable, but manager Steve Bruce has no budget to bring in new blood. And, ominously, another tax bill is due. So how did it come to this at one of the world's most prestigious and historic clubs? Birmingham Live has spoken extensively to highly placed sources from the worlds of football and finance in Birmingham, in the UK and across the world to piece together this account of Villa's Chinese puzzle. Global domination talk of global domination filled these pages when Shai took over at Aston Villa in 2016. The ambitious Chinese businessman wanted to emulate the successful model of City Football Group, the holding company that now oversees Manchester City and five other closely linked clubs across the world. There were plans to link up with feeder clubs in Europe as Shaw began to place Villa at the cornerstone of his operations. Purchasing a bank in Indonesia was also discussed, a Hollywood studio was supposed to be a success and, get this, even a claret and blue themed movie, centered around a young Chinese boy achieving his dream of playing in the Premier League with Villa, was in the early stages of development. These were exciting times as Shaw rocked up with big plans and even bigger ambitions. Winning the Champions League was mentioned as a genuine possibility and funding wasn't an issue. After all, he pointed out he had just sold out of one of his companies, TEAMAX, for a whopping £430 million and Villa had the added extra guarantee of parachute payments for the next three years. What could go wrong? Well, remaining in the championship two years later was certainly not in the script. Neither was the recent chain of events that have left Villa on the brink of financial ruin. Sources have told us that XIA's companies in China are struggling and that's had a knock-on effect at Villa. When did the money problem start? For the first year of his tenure, Shaw would always find a way to send money over. But at the start of last season things started to become increasingly difficult. When money was needed, it would take longer than expected to arrive from China. Even when it did it was often short. While Steve Bruce had to find bargain buys and loan signings last summer to rebuild the team that failed miserably in the previous campaign. He spent just £2.5 million on transfer fees and recouped around £20 million from player sales. By the time the next window came around in January, there was simply no money available. Even the Lewis Graben loan deal was a stretch. Shaw borrowed money against the sales of Jordan Veritat and Jordan Amavi, among other things. Yet, incredibly, Villa still owed millions to other clubs for players who were purchased the previous season. 
Over in China, the owner, who claimed he would move to Birmingham with his family when he first arrived, yet ended up attending just a handful of matches last season, was experiencing major difficulties. His company, Lotus Health, has been struggling for years but it was the most recent media report, you can read it in full here, in his homeland that was most alarming. The report revealed how the Shanghai Stock Exchange had looked into the sale of a subsidiary called Changchung Cannon Thermal Power Co., and then publicly censured Shaw for his actions. The need for investment Shaw made it clear in a statement that he needs financial support to help run Villa effectively. So why did he initially tell potential investors the opposite? As reported exclusively by Birmingham Live earlier this month, a blue-chip American firm saw a £30 million bid for 30% of control rejected. These figures matched XIA's financial demands and were only submitted after extensive research into what the owner was prepared to sacrifice. A takeover offer from the same group was also under consideration but never got to that stage due to the initial rejection. But why was it rejected? What about financial fair play? Now let's get this straight, Villa have to plug a black hole of around £40 million regardless of who is in charge. And player sales were inevitable this summer anyway after failing to win promotion back to the Premier League, but not at the level Shaw is considering. If suitable offers are received for any of Villa's first team players, the owner will sanction a sale. There are other ways around FFP, though, including clever sponsorship deals that clubs have taken advantage of in the past. It's understood that Villa were previously exploring the property angle which could have generated up to £20 million, effectively having the FFP deficit. The claims are that negotiators at Villa were in talks with the council to get planning permission on a major development surrounding Villa Park. This would have improved the value of the property allowing Villa to count the increase in the value against FFP. Developments like these can take up to two years and discussions were 12 months down the line, but the search for a quick fix thwarted any early progress. It's all gone quiet for a man who was happy to quote Mao Zedong, the founder of Communist China, on the need for faith in the masses and accidentally wish Jimmy Seville a happy birthday on Twitter, XIA's recent silence is strange. Villa fans used to love his interaction, his apparent candor, and even those emoji-laden transfer teasers. Birmingham Live asked on numerous occasions for an interview but were ignored. His most recent statement was eagerly anticipated by supporters who were desperate to hear about the future of their under-threat club. But there was no talk of Hollywood glitz and glamour, a return to football's elite European competition, or in fact anything of real excitement. If anything, it's a disaster movie in waiting at Villa unless drastic changes are made in the times ahead.